Hello and welcome to this week's episode. And I, again, I was walking down the hall and I come out of the bathroom and who is it I see? But it's Ethan Dettenmeyer again. I couldn't oh. believe he was, sta- he was standing there from last week waiting to be hired back on again. I said, all right, fine, you can come on the show. Actually, I was trying to avoid my probation officer and I decided to pull a Tim Burton and just hide in the men's room. <laughs> we um, want to give you the full Hollywood experience. And today we've actually got a, a great guest, uh, John Krang. Um, who has been in the business for many, 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 many years and kind of started his, um, his journey into the stunt world uh, with a, uh, a Wu Ping Jet Li movie that was shot here in Los Angeles. And um, he uh, tells us a great story about, you know, he'd never seen, he obviously he was a big martial art fan, but how he actually got involved in uh, actually being part of the production and what happened on set when he saw, you know, how fast actually um, Jet Li was. He said he's extremely fast in what, in what he was doing. So um, I'm, uh, I'm going to let you guys listen to it because I think it's a uh, fascinating uh, interview and then we'll be right back. Hello, John. How are you today? No, it's not I'm yesterday. You, that's today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. How are you, boss? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm running between um, picking my son up at the uh, at the school and doing this. Just I'm about to leave, and there's this obviously the Vertcon that we have that we've uh, that you're going to uh, also attend, which is awesome. So great, glad to have you. Um, yeah, thanks for having. Me. Yeah, so yeah. we can talk about that at some point, but you know, sure. So there's a lot of lot going on, and uh, obviously I get to talk to great people like you about who've done millions of fights on screen um yeah. how did you start what, what was it what was it that's got you started in it i uh first uh, my first stunt job here in hollywood was uh was on a nbc movie of the week called in love and war um mm-hmm. i got to break james woods's back i played i doubled a pow guard and uh the stunt coordinator was, was dean Ferdini. he uh, doubled indiana jones in the second uh, movie and, uh-huh. and he's still a friend of mine to this day um, that was my first job as a stunt door it just happened it was a freak thing he he uh, James Wood didn't feel comfortable with the actor so he goes I want John to do it because I was working with him personally because um, it was a Vietnam War film it was a based off the Jim Stockdale story and um, it was called in love and war so I was around James every day and I was because I was teaching him the language because this, because uh, the character ends up learning Vietnamese, so I had to teach him Vietnamese. So we were, you know, in between takes, we'd just sit and we talk, we have conversations and stuff like that. And then I told him I was a martial artist, and he, yeah, I guess he got, he just got comfortable with me. So he, and he just felt like I was the right, I was the right guy for the job. So that was that was my very first stunt job. Uh, then about maybe six eight months later, um, I was auditioning for actually. I was, uh, uh, Golden Harvest was looking at me uh, to do stand up in Hong Kong because I was, I came out here to do stand up comedy and I, I met the, I met one of the executives at a, at a conference and they, I said, Hey, I'm a martial artist. I'm a black belt. And, uh, you know, I train with certain people and, and I'm also a stand up comedian. And they go, Hey, send us your stuff. So I did. And they said, You have some serious crossover potential. We, we want to work with you. So, originally when i was going to work with golden harvest they were going to send me to hong kong to do a comedy special half of it was english half of it was in chinese and they were going to sell it to hbo at showtime it then it ended up not happening so they said hey we still want to work with you what do you want to do and i said you know i want to love i, I really love how you guys do your your stunts your fight choreography i want to learn how to do that and they go really i go yeah i mean i've seen all their <laughs> movies growing up and and um you know so they said okay so, you know, I they said, we got this Jet Li movie. You want to do that? And I go, well, yeah, I, I'll do it if I get to fight Jet. And they go, really? Because this was like his fifth movie, fourth or fifth movie. He was still in his prime. And he's probably not pulling too many punches at that point. Oh, yeah, yeah. In 87? No, no, no. He, he, he followed through on a lot of stuff. Right. I felt, yeah. I felt that, yeah, felt each one of those. It was just like, man. And we, you know, we had to hit hit the ground on concrete. We didn't know, there were no crash pads. Or, yeah, or, no, or and I, 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 I want to hear about this because this was, you know, I, I've heard many stories about the Hong Kong 
uh, movie industry, how they did that. I mean, that you're falling on the ground, you're falling on the ground, you're falling off a roof, you're falling off a roof. You know, right. This, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you, there are certain safeguards that they have, but man, it's nothing like here, you know, like they have here in, in, in Hollywood. It's just completely different. I mean, what, and it shows because these guys, they their their careers are only like maybe, you know, two to seven years at the most, if 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 you're lucky, you know. But yeah, I mean, these guys, they take a bang and big time. Yeah, I heard you know. that um, Jackie Chan's broken every single bone in his body. Um, oh, yeah. He said more know. than once. Yeah, more than once. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. It's, it's kind of amazing that uh, they actually survived. So, so, so <laughs> but I, I, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of curious because I want to go back to big. You started in stand up comedy and you were in a martial artist and then you became a stunt <coughs> performer. It's not exactly the path I think that you'd <laughs> intended, was it? <laughs> no, it, 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 it's kind of weird. You just kind of fall into it. It was something I always loved to do. I didn't understand how to get in. I knew how to get into comedy. All you did was you showed up at the club, you killed, and then you got on, you know? So that's how, kind of how it works. And, you know, I, you just, I, it, you just had to know somebody and, and that's how this all happened. I got, you know, one gig led to another, right. um, because of the, because of the, the work on the master, my, one of my friends was supposed to work on it, but he couldn't, he couldn't work on it for, for some odd reason. And he ended up being the sword master on hook and he hired me on that. So I was on that for three months. So when I was working on the hook, that was like, it was awesome because I was able to do both things at the same time. I was able to work, uh, I guess, from 6 a.m. 6 a.m. to till like seven that night on hook. And then I then at the time when I got the job, I was offered my first national TV appearance appearance uh, doing stand up. So right after work at the at on on the Sony lot, I drive over to the comedy store and work on my act. And then I go home, sleep, wake up next morning, do the same thing. I did that for three months straight. There was so much fun. I didn't need an alarm clock. What 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 type of comedy do you do? I'm kind of curious. Uh, what's, what's your stand up? Is it is it detrimental? De what what type of comedy is it? It was kind of like um, it was yeah. You know, I talked. To, it was all personal experience mainly. You know, uh, it was around the time where um, <clears throat> mid '80s. It was it was very. Uh, it was the answer to. It was uh, at the time, you know, rock went corporate, you know. So what happened was um, rock, uh, stand up comedy became the punk rock of of uh, the entertainment industry. You know, you, you, we were able to express how we felt, you know, with uh, with with our comedy. And you, I mean, I, every night I'd be at the comedy store working with guys like, you know, uh, Richard Pryor, Sam Kennison, Jim Carrey, you know, oh, Tommy gosh. Davidson. <laughs> yeah, those are those are all friends of mine. You know, so yeah, and, and you know, I did that that night, and then I did stunts during the day. I mean, what more can I ask is it, for? Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Uh, you know, I always say to people, you, you know, sometimes you have a dream, and sometimes what happens along the way, you kind of get sidetracked. <laughs> right. But it doesn't mean you don't end up kind of in the same place, but it's kind of a little different than what you in, in, initially imagined on, yeah. on the path that you set out. Yeah, I mean, I, I did, I did stand up. I, you know, I. I got burnt out after a while. I did it for 14 years. And I just, you know, I had three national TV appearances. I, you know, did a ton of shows. And I just got burnt out. It just was, I was just like, I can't be funny anymore. I just, I, I just needed something different. So I ended up, uh, I got into video games, started producing those. And then what happened was I started, they started doing mocap and stuff like that. So I started coordinating some of those jobs. Mm. And, and I, because I, ended up producing and designing some of these games. So I, you know, being a martial artist and doing stunts, I kind of knew how some of this stuff worked. And I started hiring people that I knew uh, at, that were stunt professionals to do the mocap. So that's how that kind of worked. And then um, I was writing for a magazine uh, in, in here. It's called Kung Fu Tai Chi. It was through TC Media. Mm -hmm. and, and what happened was um, <clears throat> I got to interview guys like Jack Chan, Sam Hung. And then you know, we'll ping. And then, you know, just by talking to them, I got the itch to get to, to get back into stunts. And you know, they would kind of talk to me and tell me what they did. And I got to hang out with them on set. And one of the guys I did get to hang out with for for a lot of times while they were doing the rehearsals in, in LA was uh, you know, ping. So I so he was showing me how they were doing everything. I saw how they did all the wire work and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, all right, I'm I'm getting back into this. It, it was so infectious. So tell me, you 
you you've already mentioned that you speak three languages at least. Is that correct? Vietnamese, I, Chinese, and, and English. Yes. Wow. And pig Latin. <laughs> and pig Latin. Some, <laughs> some, sometimes I call my my pig Latin's English, but um, <laughs> yes. people, uh, people can always understand me. That's all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, Vietnamese and Chinese were my first two languages before I learned English. So. Oh right, okay. So, yeah. so are you a mix of, of Vietnamese and and Chinese? No, actually, uh, my my family were Chinese and they lived in Vietnam and Cambodia. So um, that's how I picked that up. Uh, tough, you, tough time to live there, I think, with yeah. your, your your parents. That's uh, yeah. it was before. This is actually before the war. So this is, is before, before the war broke out. Yeah, right before it broke out. Wow. But yeah, is you know. Yeah, so so that's and my dad spoke like thirteen languages. He was a diplomat. Wow. Yeah, my mom spoke eight. So and I only speak three. So I'm like, oh, uh, you're you're really like the down in the dumps here, aren't you? Yeah, there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so so okay. So let, how was that first experience? We didn't really touch on it. The, the experience with Jet Li. Then you, then you did it. What what did you see? As what kind of amazed you? What kind of did you take away from it? Oh, okay. Did you see um, Shaolin Temple and uh, martial arts of Shaolin? Yeah, I did see it. Um, I I saw snippets of it. I was trying to I was trying to watch it. And I couldn't find it sometimes, I was, and I saw pieces of it because I actually trained with the Shaolin Temple here in uh, oh. in Sherman Oaks. Uh, so for two years, oh, two cool. three years, and I've done Hung Gar Kung Fu. I did it for nice. 20, 25, 30 years. So um, it was. I was very interested in that. I have a copy of it. I'll lend it to you next time I see you. So. Oh, do you? Awesome. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, yeah. Next time I see you, I'll make you a copy. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll lend it to you. Oh, so, yeah. awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what happened was um, uh, Jet Li would do this uh, B-twist. You know those B-twists where you, you, you wind up and you jump and you do the, uh, the spin, your, your body straight and parallel to the ground. Right, and yes. You, you, yeah, you spin like two, three times in the air. I, was, I thought that, that was impossible. I thought it was a special effect. So, uh, he, and he did I, it. I thought, yeah, and... and he fought me he beat me up i was down on the ground and and i and the next guy he fought he did he did that move i go oh cool he's gonna be doing this and i was looking around for the for the uh for the pick point you know for the wire i was like going they're not doing this oh geez he's gonna do this so he he moved so fast i couldn't my 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 mind and my body my mind just freaked out when and saw him doing. Went, did he just do what I just saw? <laughs> really? And and and, and, um, and here I am, supposed to be dead, right? I'm laying on the ground, and I'm like, you know, if I just squint my eyes, and I can, and then watch, you know, the the camera. I'm far back. The camera's not going to see me with my eyes open. So, so when he did it, I naturally freaked out because I never saw it live before. And 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 I <laughs> you're went, supposed to be dead at this point, right? Right. Yeah, so I went, I went, oh shit. <laughs> so the cat, the toy hard to drive, got just so pissed off at me. And he says, hey, you, you're supposed to be dead. Do dead people yell, oh shit? <laughs> and I'm like, God, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. And then that jet's looking at me, like, what, what happened? Why'd you, you know? So I just told him, and he's, I said, hey, look, I'm sorry. I, I saw you do that move before. I didn't. I didn't think it was real, but when I saw you move, I was like, holy crap. I thought it was, it was amazing. And then all the stunt, stunt guys just cracked up and they, and from the rest of that time on, and I, when I'd show up on set afterwards just to hang out, they, my nickname at the time was, oh shit. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that was going to be it. I figured yeah, that was yeah. going to be it. Yeah. Sorry, am I, I'm not allowed to cuss on this. Sorry. Well, no, no this, is a, this is the non-PG version. This is okay. okay. We, can, we can actually say some words on this so but uh okay <laughs> so yeah that, that would you could hear it was so funny to talk in chinese and they go all right who's who can do this blah blah blah, blah. and they go da, 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 da. oh shit will do it you know <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> he found your new nickname right yeah yeah so how long were you on that film for i was on it we were, I, I actually worked on it for two days but um the thing was is i worked on it i actually hung out like three four three to four days before that because I wanted to see how they did their stuff. I didn't want want to walk it cold. Mm -hmm. You know, I because I, I was so passionate about you know Hong Kong style action and just martial arts films. I wanted to see how they did that. So I would just hang out and watch and just learn what they That's did. That's way to do set. it, isn't it? 
yeah, yeah. It's always it's always the best way. Yeah, you know, just by and and then you know I was friends with the producer and she said hey you can come on hang out anytime you want so I did afterwards I just come out and just hung out and just watched and just learned and I mean you know uh, Yung Wu Ping's brother was a fight choreographer on it one of the fight choreographers oh, and nice. I was just like man you know these guys they're so good at what they do I'm not saying that anybody here in the west is it's just a different it's it's a different yeah, it's approach different. yeah it's, different. it's a completely different approach I mean we shot ten fights in two days. Yeah, yeah. 10 full fights and but the thing was is in the movie you ended up seeing a compilation com, compilation of a bunch of them you'll see me in the the fight i'm like three different people <laughs> dressed up dressed up uh, uh, differently so so you know for me that was an honor because they you know they trusted me to to use me those different times there's some guys that didn't go through a costume change every time we did a fight i was the only one that went through a costume. It's okay. You made an impression with those shit. So, you know. yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's, that's yeah. what it is. They're done. Why we'll use him again. I like yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. It was, it was cool. So, so, how, so you were there for, what did you do after? Did you come back to the States? Did you stay there for longer to, to, to work with them? What, what, uh, what was the process I, after that? Actually, we shot it here in, in, in LA. Oh, you shot it in LA? Yes. Yes. It was the master. They shot it here in LA. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So, so they brought the Hong Kong crew. You know, uh, we had a they had the stunt crew was all Hong Kong, uh, uh, but the the camera crew, except for the GP, I think was was from here. Yeah, you know, sound, all those other, you know, all the all the other departments were here in LA. Right. Yeah. And so, so, but you said you worked with you, uh, you Ping after that, correct? Oh no, no, I worked with his brother um, Chung Yen, who was. Uh, who, who choreographed? Yeah, I mean, he's he's done a lot. He did uh, the first Once Upon a Time in China. All right. Yeah. 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 yeah he's that. he's done a yeah he's done a lot. I mean, I can't remember off the top of my head, but he did Charlie's Angels one and two here. You know, so so yeah. Um, I worked with him. I actually was his coordinator for his stunt coordinator for the uh, for the L.A. Times commercial where you where he showed how to do the they showed the behind the scenes of how they did all the wire gags. So I was a stunt coordinator, and Ben Affleck was the uh, the narrator on it because at the time, there he just actually we were working on he was working on Charlie's Angels at the time, and then um, they got Ben Affleck to come in and and do the narration because he just finished Daredevil because uh, Chung Yen came in and did the playground fight between uh, Ben and uh, Jennifer Garner. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, so it was around that time where they're bringing in Hong Kong people all the time to do the action scenes. So I kind of, I took it, you know, I was able to take advantage of that by helping out and doing what I could to help these guys out. And was that really kind of like the start of your love for this, a career after you'd done that, you stayed in the States and continued working? Yes, yeah, yeah. Actually, um, because I mean, you've done I, uh, you've done a slew of stuff since that point, and, you, and we'll get to that in a second. But uh. yeah, I yeah, I, I I started off. I mean, I I did a bunch of stuff after I did the master, which isn't on my IMDb uh, for some odd reason. There's like eight things that I did that's not on there, but there's actually more. But what I ended when I officially jumped back in was um, I did a short, and then I got picked up for a Roger Corman. I did three Roger Corman movies. Uh, did you so, which one? Which ones were those? Uh, Hard as Nails, uh -huh. Slaughter Studios, and Shakedown. Okay, I I did yeah. one many years ago for him as well. It was uh, back in the nineteen eighty five, six, seven, somewhere around there. Oh wow! It was a Would... Mask of the Red Death. That's, that's oh funny. wow! <laughs> yeah. So did uh, did Roger direct it? No, he didn't. I can't remember who directed it, but um, but it, it was fun because you know it was kind of a a classic but you know made in the yeah. roger corman style i'll do I'll, i won't throw too much in it i'll put re repurpose this production arm well, it, the studio they used was actually on venice it's gone now yes. but it was a yes. little place was that the same place you were and it yes. just kept repurposing different things yep. very smart business model very but, smart you know but uh yeah <laughs> yeah shot, we shot two of them there the last one uh slaughter studios was the last one that was shot there and the next day this uh there was a uh, one of those uh wrecking balls that was waiting and they had just, <laughs> just to take it down right yeah we I, we sat there and went oh my god this is the end of an era yeah so yeah, I mean, it was they, cool yeah they they uh 
I work with a guy called, do you know a guy called Si Hong Leong? Si Hong Leong? Uh, she was a stunt coordinator. I actually worked with him years ago. He was, he was from Hong Kong. I just, oh, nice. I just thought, anyway, but yeah, I've not worked with many people from Hong Kong, but I've worked with a couple. Um, anyway, let's get back to you. Um, sure. After that, what was what, what uh, took you to the next stage of your stunt? Did you continue doing stunts? Did you go back to comedy? What did, what, what was the what was the path? I, once once I got back into once I you know met with Wu Ping and 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 uh, started helping him with some of the some things, it, it, I was hooked. After the Matrix, I saw how there's this there's this buzz, this energy that that you just it, it was infectious if, if you're you know what it's like on set you know when you watch yeah. it's just so infectious this whole group mentality of helping you know fulfill this Create vision yeah. yeah it's just it's it, that whole energy is infectious and I, I there was no way i could go back to doing anything else i mean and you know i i felt like i already had i did my course with stand-up you know, I, I, it just, you know, it didn't appeal to me at that, that much anymore. I just, you know, because I saw the, 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 the whole group mentality of working on, uh, on a stunt, you know, that, that lasts forever. You just like, if you think about it, you do a movie, you know, it's going to be here after we're all gone. Oh yeah. Absolutely. And I thought, you know, that's that'd be so cool to do something that, that people will watch forever, you know? And so and that was my my whole thing when I was watching kung fu movies as a kid, you know, just watching these movies and singing. God, this guy created this thing a couple of years ago, and people are still going nuts over it now. I'm like, God, how how cool of a job is that? <laughs> yeah, it's like being a kid and playing all over again, isn't it? But except with, yeah. you know, some uh, accidents that do happen. Um, yeah, I've done wire work where I've actually landed on my head, so. Uh. You know, it's, it's uh, I, I I was I was one of the first Westerners to sort of start going into wet wire work in some areas, and after uh-huh. I'd seen all the Hong Kong stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, let's, and and I started doing it, and I and I told these uh, guys, and and this is where I learned the importance of making sure you understood a language when you work uh, in a foreign country, right? Uh, you know, and I got uh, I got, they didn't pull me when I was supposed to pull me, and I went backwards on my head. So oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. that was not fun. But you know, it's. It is part of. I, I feel alive when I'm on set. When I'm doing stunts yes. or, or action, I'm alive. I I love it. Absolutely love yeah. it. So, you know, it's um, it's a it's a fabulous. Uh, and I so I understand what you're saying. It's it yeah. It's 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 a combination of two things. It's the performance aspect that I that that you get when I do stand up, and also the athleticism you get as a martial artist or mm. or just a, a physical performer. Mm. It, it's just like man, and you know. You, you get to re- it, it's 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 hard not to not do it's like this. a drug isn't it really it's like, yes, you know what yes. would you do if you weren't doing this i don't know i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> that's true. right it's it's yes. true it's like i have no yeah. idea what i'd be doing if, if i wasn't doing this so but um so so tell me you, you uh, when did you start fight choreography how did that how did you get into that i um I got it. I, I first did a job in 1990. A friend of mine couldn't take the job, so he gave it to me. I did not like what I did. I thought I, I thought I could do it. To be honest with you, I thought, oh yeah, this is a good job. Blah blah blah. So I come from a, a, a karate tang sudo background, mm-hmm. okay. and um, what happened was I thought, oh, I can do this. So what ended up happening? You know, and I'm not I'm not knocking the styles or anything like that at all. But I'm coming from a stunt coordinator, fight choreographer's point of view. Um, so I only knew how to exchange in a choreographed manner through one step sparring. You know, it's a you 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 throw a right handed lunch lunch punch, and the person who's supposed to react reacts off of that. And I think a lot of films from the '80s. 70s and 80s here in the West that were martial arts themed had that issue, and I was I was guilty of, with it too. And I finally saw the 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 footage, and I'm like, going, "This is awful. I can't do this." Yeah. You know, so I what I did was I disappeared. I started studying film. I started studying movies. I started uh, recording them and started breaking the de- breaking them down and watching what they did. And I realized it was all about 
different blocks, different ways of, 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 uh, of different angles and how it cuts. And I, you know, at, at that time when I wrote my book, I had over 3,000 movies uh, that, I, that I accessed that I could watch and study and, and make notes on. So I, I really, really studied it. I, I studied editing. I studied camera angles and, and all that stuff because, you know, camera angles and editing really make the movie. Yeah, and the, the, but the problem is the problem is on this is that sometimes you don't have that control when you create you something. You don't you give them the best you can, and then suddenly an editor will do something. You go, why was why did they cut from that angle? It doesn't make sense. Right, right. I've seen it so many times. Yeah, and, you know. and that's what the Hong Kong guys are so good at. You know I mean, because they they have that autonomy. You know, when you watch them on set, they tell you exactly where the camera goes. They said, "I need it here. This is you're going to cut here." Da 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 da. You know, you, you don't have a say. They have they have complete control. As over the director, you mean as the, as the camera. Yeah.